Hey there, amazing viewers. Welcome back to our channel, and if you're new here, hit that subscribe button and join our fantastic community. I'm Kronos, and today we're diving deep into the exhilarating universe of My Hero Academia with a mind-blowing twist. What if Deku had the gamer powers? Yes, you heard it right, and this is just the beginning. Get ready for an adventure like no other, as we explore the uncharted territories of heroism and gaming. But before we jump right in, I want to express my heartfelt appreciation for your continuous support. Your likes, comments, and shares keep us going, so thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you're as excited as I am, hit that thumbs up button and let's make this video go viral. Chapter 1, Lesson 1 It was a stupid thing to do. I admit it. But I was just so angry. Angry at the teachers and my classmates for enabling it even encouraging it. At myself for never standing up. Not that it would have done me any good. He was stronger and faster than me. And that's not counting his quirk. But yeah, most of all I was angry at Kaken. Bakuga Katsuki, my supposed friend. He had always been rough. But after he got his quirk, he got worse. Everyone praised him, no one stopped him. I knew I would never be a hero. I wanted it, studied for it. But I was quirkless. In a world where 80% of the people had powers, and that number was growing every day, I was abnormal. Subpar. Even if I tried the other route, learning martial arts and acrobatics, I just didn't have the genes for it. No amount of exercise would increase my height. And there was no way I could build up the necessary muscle. Not without some kind of drug. Maybe if I had started years before. Still, I couldn't let it go. I watched heroes and villains. Learned their quirks. Figured out their weaknesses and limits. And strategies to take them down. Also their untapped potential. Ways they could have used their powers, but didn't. I even had a ranking system. Based on an old game book from before powers were real. It wasn't perfect. But it gave me a structure to work on and good estimates. Kaken got angry again, because I had put down that I wanted to go to UA, wanted to be a hero. Only this time, he took my latest hero notebook. He blew it up with his power, and then threw it out the window, into the koi pond. When I fished it out, saw it. It was like everything from the last ten years just bubbled up. Exploded out? You might think that was me explaining how my amazing quirk suddenly manifested. It wasn't. No, I just got mad and punched the cement barrier around the pond. Full on with my right hand, as hard as I could. Like I said, stupid. I didn't think I had broken anything. But the knuckles on my first two fingers split, and bled freely. The rest of my hand was all scuffed up, and it hurt like hell. Tears spilled from my eyes, the physical pain matching the hurt in my heart. All I could do was wrap my hand as best I could in my handkerchief. And then trudge home. Izuku, honey. My mom cried out when she saw the blood dripping from my hand. She hurried over and drew me gently to the table. Mom quickly got the first aid kit. I always wondered if she had been a nurse, the way she treated my injuries. Or had she just gotten so good, taking care of me? What happened? She asked softly. Bullies, I said evasively. With my dad away all the time, it was just her and me. We were close, and I couldn't lie to her. But at the same time, I wasn't going to rat out my friend. She looked shocked, and I quickly clarified. Not like that. He threw my notebook in the pond. And when I saw it, I got mad and I... I punched the barrier. Oh, Izuku. She consoled me as she finished cleaning my cuts and began wrapping them. Mom? I asked carefully. Do you think it is okay for me to try to go to UA? I didn't mention becoming a hero. It was an unspoken thing between us. She regretted her reactions after we found out I was quirkless. And she worried about me. UA had other areas of study, like costuming and technology for heroes, and legal and promotional studies to support them. We both pretended that I would be happy in one of those classes. 
Izuku, I'm not going to tell you that you can do anything, she said firmly. Even All Might can't fly or move things without touching them. She illustrated that by pulling the scissors out of the box with her own power. But that doesn't mean you can't try. That you shouldn't try. You should follow your dream as far as you want to. There we go. She taped down the last bandage. After dinner and homework, I had tried to play the Nippon hero Mizu. I was hoping to finally get All Might up to level 100. I'm sorry to say I had been maining Mount Lady for the long reach of her normal attacks and present Mike for his omnidirectional specials. But now I had enough materials for all of All Might's badges, so I wanted to unleash his full power. Unfortunately, with the pain in my hand and the bandages in the way, I couldn't play very well. So I ended up going to bed early. Have you ever woken up and been caught thinking your dream was real? That you were late for school or aliens were invading? At first I thought that was what was happening to me. I opened my eyes, only to see a familiar notification screen hovering in front of me. It didn't match any specific game. If anything, it looked more like the yellow boxes from Dad's old American comics. You have had a proper meal and a good night's sleep. Health and energy fully restored. That what I get for playing games while on Tylenol. I muttered waving a hand before my face before wiping the sleep out of my eyes. The box obligingly vanished. I levered myself out of bed. Normally at this point I would have been stifling a yawn or even hitting snooze. But today I felt really good, alert and energized. And the normal morning chill didn't seem to bother me either. I skipped my robe and went out to the kitchen. Good morning, Izuku. My mom looked a bit surprised. How is your hand? Pretty good, so far. I told her. I flexed my fingers to show her. That's good. She smiled. If you have any pain later, be sure to go to the nurse. I will. After wolfing down my breakfast, which earned me another odd look, I went into the bathroom to clean up. I washed my face, ran a comb through my hair in vain, brushed and flossed. Then I rinsed with mouthwash. I closed my eyes when I spit it out, having learned that Mindy spray in the eyes was not a pleasant feeling. And when I opened them again, you have taken good care of your teeth. Skill Oral Hygiene, LVL1 unlocked. I blinked at it. I definitely wasn't waking up anymore. It stayed there, hovering right in between me and the mirror. I reached out to touch it, and my hand passed right through it. But it stayed in place. I noticed a little X in the upper right corner and tried to tap it. There no sensation, but this time the message disappeared. I'm going crazy, I told my reflection. Either that or someone in the building has a hologram quirk and is messing with me. It didn't answer, which I took as a good sign. I was used to pranks, some of which could be really elaborate, depending on the powers involved. But I didn't have time to worry about it now. I had to get to school. You are on guard and looking for information. Skill analyze LVL1 unlocked. I was watching for whoever might be doing this, and just in general for Kaken or his groupies. But even though I let the window hang out for a few minutes, no one else on the street reacted. It seemed like I was the only one who could see it. You are paying close attention to the lesson. Skill mathematics basic LVL1 unlocked. You have gained two new wit skills in one day. Wit plus one. If it was a prank, whoever it was, was either in my school, or had a really long range. But a new suspicion was forming in me, and a new hope. I pushed it down, and kept listening. You are trying, pearly, to avoid the getting hit. Skill dodge, LVL1 unlocked. I would have thought I had that one already. Hooray dodgeball. I wonder if I could get my hands on the ball, if I could unlock a throw skill, or something like that. You have made a good guess based on available information. Intuition plus one. If this was a prank, it had to be some form of telepathy quirk. You are paying close attention to the lesson. Skill chemistry basic, LVL1 unlocked. You have gained three new wit skills in one day. Wit plus two. 
you are paying close attention to the lesson. Skill Creative Writing, LVL1 Unlocked. You have gained two new charisma skills in one day. Charisma plus one. By the time lunch rolled around, I wasn't sure if I was more confused or annoyed. But I was also finally ready to consider that thread option. So I could be crazy. I mumbled. Or it could be a prank. Or maybe, just maybe, it could be that I finally gained my quirk. It's not impossible. After all, Jobs, the fruit hero, didn't discover his power until he was 16, because his dad was so allergic to apples. But then what happened to trigger it? Nothing out of the order happened yesterday. I've been hurt before, I've played games before. Dinner wasn't anything strange. And wouldn't it make more sense if I had just finally had too much and snapped? That happened to a lot of kids in America before they passed those laws. I should be glad I don't have access to a gun. But if I was going crazy would it be like? I was cut off when a pencil hit my forehead. Cut it out, you shitty nerd! Bakugo roared at me. I suddenly realized I had actually by thinking out loud. Again. Fortunately the pencil was a light plastic one. And hit me eraser first. So it didn't break the skin. Break the skin. My eyes widened as I thought that, and remembered the first message. I quickly dug my thumbnail under the tape, and pulled off the bandage on my right pointer finger. It was clean. No blood, no scab, not even a scar. I glanced around, and realized since I had shut up, no one was looking at me anymore. I peeled off the rest of the cloth and tape as quickly as I could, and stuffed it in my pocket, only vaguely noticing that pulling the tape off didn't even sting. My right hand was unmarked, like the stupid punch yesterday had never happened. Hindsight being 2020, I recognized that my lack of injuries could just have easily been part of the hallucination or trick. But by that logic, I could have imagined everything since. Or I could just be a manga character. I can only accept the reality I have, especially when everyone else seems to share it. I could barely believe it. I have a quirk, I said as softly as I could, not wanting anyone to know before I could be sure. I had originally planned to linger around town on my way home, hoping to see heroes in action. Especially since the news said All Might was back in Mizutafu. Instead I rushed home as quickly as I could. I beat mom home, which was good. I wasn't ready to explain my hand. Not yet. Not until I was sure. I got changed into comfortable clothing. I sat down at my desk, my computer still off. I took a deep breath. Then I said the word that would change my life. Status. Another of the screens appeared, this one noticeably larger. Name, Izuka Midoriya. Race, human, quirk metagene negative. Age, 14. Level, 2. Active title, The Gamer. There was more, a lot more. But what got my attention was the race. Human, of course. But, quirk metagene negative. Did that mean I didn't have a quirk after all? Was this really just a trick? Or was it something else? I considered that for a while. I also glanced quickly through the other tabs. In fact, I jumped back and forth between them as fast as I could hoping to trip up my own brain or whoever might be tricking me. But it failed, the screens always said the same thing as the last time, and shifted immediately. You have conducted a logical experiment to try to disprove a hypothesis. With plus one. Another screen appeared in front of my status. I quickly closed it, staring at my attribute that had just increased. Could this really be real? But if it wasn't a quirk, then just what was it? Izuku, honey, my mom called out gently from the other side of the door. It was her worried voice. Had I dropped the bandages? Izuku, can I come in? She said again. We really need to talk. Sure, mom, I told her, and left the screen up to test if mom could see it. She opened the door, and I could see she had been crying, but had tried to dry her eyes. Mom, I said nervously. What's wrong? It's... It's about Bakugakun, she said, 
There's been a villain attack. That was both the best and worst day of my life. And the start of my path to being the greatest hero in the world. A path I walked for both myself and my fallen friend. Chapter 2, Lesson 2 The funeral for Bakuga Katsuki was held three days later. It was pretty much an emotional roller coaster for me. I was sad, of course. Kaken was my first friend. Even if things had been strained between us over the last decade or so, I still considered him as more than just a classmate. And then there were his parents. Of course, they felt terrible. And while I didn't know Bakuga-san that well, Mitsuki Obasan had always been good to me. So I felt bad for them. I was mad, of course. Mostly at that villain. But it was dead, burned to ash by Endeavor. Kaken hadn't been hurt by his flames. It was already too late. Kaken had suffocated and also been partially digested. Unfortunately, there was more to it than that. See, the school had offered our grade the afternoon off, so we could attend the funeral. Almost everyone took them up on the offer. But only one of them showed up. The quiet, blue-haired girl from the class next door. I didn't know her name, and didn't feel comfortable approaching her. I wasn't sure how she was connected to Kaken. Had she liked him? Hate and feared him? Or was she just that respectful? I tried to give the others some credit. Maybe it was just too hard for them. I know in their place, Kaken would have gone to the arcade, not able to admit to his feelings. Or face his own mortality through the death of a classmate. I still couldn't help but think that they should have shown up. I was happy, surprisingly. Not that Kaken was dead. No, it was because my dad's company actually agreed to fly him back for the funeral, so I got to see him for once. Even better, some heroes came. Mount Lady, Kamui Woods, and Death Arms all came. They all apologized to Kaken's parents for failing to save him. Endeavor was too busy to come, but sent a representative from his agency to offer his regrets. Years later, I learned that that was a lie. Endeavor didn't even know Kaken's name or bother to learn when the funeral was. His daughter, the representative, did it all on her own. Both Mom and Natsuki Obasan were inconsolable. That didn't stop them from trying to comfort each other, which only seemed to make things worse. It hurt me to seem them like that. Mitsuki Obasan, I said, edging slowly closer to the sobbing ladies. Both moms turned to look at me, as did Bakuga-san. I just... I stuttered. Then I took a breath and steeled myself. Kaken and I both had the same dream. To get into UA and become heroes. His dream was even greater, to be the number one hero, while I would have been happy just to make it in. But not anymore. From now on, I'm going to work even harder. Hard enough for both of us. And I will become the number one hero. For both of us. I'm sure Katsuki-kun would have been very happy to hear that. Bakuga-san told me kindly. Really? I blinked. I thought he would have called me stupid Deke and yelled that I would never surpass him. Ha! Huh. Mitsuki Obasan barked a laugh smiling for the first time that afternoon. That does sound more like our son. Deku? Kaken's dad copied me. Did he call you that? Yeah. I nodded with a sheepish grin. It's another way to read my name. And he said it fit me because I was like a Deku, wooden doll, cheap, empty, practically worthless, and unable to do anything on my own. He flinched at that, and the moms exchanged glances. You know that brat was never good at expressing himself. Mitsuki Obasan told me with fake levity. He probably just never thought to mention the other side. Other side? I prompted, confused. Yes, she said firmly, clamping her hands on my shoulders. Because you are empty, that means you can be filled up. Just like you can paint a blank wooden doll to be a hero or an anime character, you can become anything. I think deep down, Katsuki believed that. And I believe you will become a hero. I didn't miss how my mom turned away, so I wouldn't see the look on her face. Congratulations. You have read the entire basic manual, seriously. Who does that anymore? 
Wit plus 3, Endurance plus 2, Determination plus 2, Japanese language skill improved, LVL 12. Dot. If I was going to use my power, live up to Mitsuki Obasan's expectations, and become the number one hero, I needed to know everything about my power. Fortunately, like all good games, it came with instructions. There were 10 tabs when I called up the interface. Status, inventory, skills, talents, party, and system were all visible and active. There was one concealed tab between inventory and skills and three of them between party and system. Unfortunately, system did not include a save function. It did let me turn on a customizable heads-up display, which I played around with a bit before turning it off. Seeing a floating display of my health was a little disconcerting and a little morbid. I could also choose from a couple of styles for the interface widows and change the interface language. Most importantly, there was the manual. Status was a list of my current abilities. It was also where I could spend saved up points to improve my attributes. Just as a test, I put one more point into luck, not wanting to have the lowest possible value. Speaking of attributes, there were a number of ways I could improve them. Just by naturally doing things associated with them, they would go up. More the harder I worked. Except for luck, apparently, another reason I put a point into it. The second way was just as obvious. Every time I leveled up, I got seven points to spend. Other people only got five, which was a benefit of my power. Similarly, I got three skill points per level, instead of two. And while most people got one talent point every third level, I got them every third level and every fifth level, too. Except for multiples of 15, then one of the two talent points was delayed a level. Anyway, as I did with luck, I could spend my points freely, improve any attribute or skill I wanted without even trying. According to the manual, other people only spent their points subconsciously. I could also improve my attributes by unlocking certain talents. And there was a fourth method, but it was hidden. Inventory showed what I was wearing and using, equipment if you will, and also let me store a small number of items in an extra-dimensional space. I only had 10 blocks of storage in a 2x5 grid, but small items could stack in some cases. Both a handful of pencils and three of my hero notebooks only took one block, but each of my school books took up one of its own. My desk chair took four blocks, and even when I took everything else out, I couldn't store my bed. Skills gave a deep explanation of the skills I had. It also showed new skills I could unlock, with basic descriptions. I could spend points to buy or improve any of those skills. Also like attributes, I could improve skills by using them. There were also skill books, which I could use to improve or unlock a skill, but the book would be consumed in the process. It seemed my chemistry book qualified but I wasn't going to destroy school property. There was a great out way to improve my skills, too. The Skills tab also showed skills I was close to being able to unlock, along with the prerequisites, as well as dozen of grayed out skills I was either not close to or would never be able to unlock. Talents was much the same, what I have and what I could get. Except that talents could not be improved, they were one and done and the only way to get them was to spend points or use the hidden method. My talents themselves were a bit more interesting. Studious simply gave me a constant bonus to improve my wit and intuition, as well as any associated skills. Gamer's body let me heal almost anything with a good meal and eight hours of sleep. There were some status ailments it could not cure, and those might block my healing. It also reduced feelings of pain and fatigue. Finally, it gave me a single energy pool, instead of separate pools for stamina, mana, ki, and psions. My energy was only equal to the two highest pools I would have normally had, but since I could freely use it for anything, it was a decent trade-off. Except magic. I had purchasable talents for psychic powers and key powers, but nothing for magic. Maybe it wasn't real, or maybe they were just talents I couldn't access yet. Either way, all three of them required me to buy talents, before I could start using the skills. 
and I was carefully considering which one to buy first. Gamer's mind made me immune to mundane fear, confusion, surprise, etc. Basically, I wouldn't freeze up in battle. It also gave me resistance to mental status ailments from quirks. Or, I guess, other powers like mine. If they existed. It also protected me from survivor's guilt, PTSD, and similar mental issues. That part worried me a bit, but I quickly got over it. Party was just like it sounded. I could invite up to four people into my party. If I did so, they would get access to their own status, skills, and talents tabs, as well as more restricted access to the party tab. It also meant we shared any experience points we got, but increased the overall total. That was the other thing that struck me. There were multiple mentions of XP in the book, and both I and my skills had levels. But none of the screens offered me any sort of XP total or gauges. So now what? I mumbled to myself. Obviously I need to train. The UA exams are in 10 months. I'm going to need equipment. And I should see if any of the books in the bookstore will unlock new skills, especially physical ones. And I need to decide if I want to get the first key talent or the first psychokinesis tal. I was cut off by a pair of quick, sharp pings, accompanied by pop-up screens. Quest alert. Oldest ally. Tell your mother about the gamer and convince her to help you attend UA. Rewards. Advance on your allowance to buy training materials. Talent? Talent? Failure penalties. None. However, the reward talents are normally not available until higher levels and you must purchase them on your own. Time limit, 76 hours. Accept decline. I immediately hit accept, having been planning to talk to my mom and ask for an advance anyway. That just made the decision easier. But the second screen made me shiver. Mandatory quest alert. The path of a hero. Gain entrance to UA Academy in the Hero Course. Rewards. 100,000 XP. 5 bonus skill points. 2 bonus talent point. Failure penalties. Immediate and permanent loss of the gamer. Time limit. 314 days. Accept. I did some quick math in my head. Calculated a future date. Plus one wit, mathematics, basic skill improved, LVL2. 314 days. One week after the UA entrance exams. One shot, or I would lose my power. Forever. Then, as I watched, the clock ticked over to midnight, and the counter went down to 313. I hit the accept button, and then went to bed. Tomorrow was Saturday, so I would have time to talk to my mom then. But before I fell asleep, I checked something on instinct and got another plus one intuition for it. The blank tab between inventory and skills said quests and was no longer disabled. Chapter 3. Lesson 3. I woke up the next morning and quickly went over certain sections of the manual again as I tried to figure out what I would tell my mom. Considering her probable counter-arguments, I went over to the bookshelf, took out a specific book, and then stored it in my inventory. Then it was out to the kitchen. Good morning, mom, I said as naturally as I could, except a squeak in my voice ruined it. Then I looked around. Where's dad? I asked. Oh, ah, uh, she hesitated. He left last night, caught a red eye back to America. He has work, you know. Mom, I prompted gently. Is something going on with dad? With you and dad? You two barely talked yesterday, and he left without saying goodbye. Well, Izuka, honey, she said cautiously. I guess I should tell you. Your father and I are legally separated. Legally separated? I parroted in confusion. I'm not surprised you don't know about that, she said. It has only been an option in Japan for about 20 years, and it is still uncommon. It means that while we are still married, we are apart and we own our possessions individually. And certain other aspects are spelled out in the agreement. Like me? I asked softly. 
She looked down and didn't say anything. It's because of me, isn't it? I realized. No, Izuku. She hurried over and hugged me. It was not your fault. You are not to blame. You should never believe that. Your father and I always burned bright. When we were happy. She blushed, and I tried not to think about it. But even from the beginning, when we fought, it was like dynamite. She continued. Natsuki always said she was surprised we lasted long enough to get married. But what drove you apart? I countered. What made you fight was me. There is a school, she said. A school for quirkless children. One where they don't spend time trying to teach you about controlling quirks or about quirk laws. A school where children without powers don't have to be afraid bullied. For a moment I considered that. But I wasn't that naive. Bullying predated quirks. There is no reason to think that just because the school only had quirkless students didn't mean they wouldn't find other reasons to torment each other. But that school is near the north shore of Hokkaido. She continued, a boarding school. I didn't want to send you away, not at five years old. And there were rumors. I could imagine. Teacher's cruelty was the first thing that came to mind. But even worse. An isolated school, a population with a specific genetic trait. That would be a perfect testing ground. Or control group. A few years later, a certain hero agency investigated the school. Not long after, most of the administration and some of the teachers went to prison for a very long time. And the school was shut down. Your father didn't believe the stories. He thought it would be best for you to go there. Mom told me. And I was adamant you stay. So yes, we fought about it. If it hadn't been that, it would have been something else. She looked at my face and must have seen the doubts. She smiled sadly and said, But the final straw was how I've let myself go, she told me. The second time he came back from America, he looked at me and asked for the separation. That got me out of my funk, making me angry. That's not true, Mom, I told her. There's nothing wrong with you. You are still really pretty. That's kind of you, she said wistfully. Too bad the doctor doesn't agree. She looked at me firmly. Your father is a good man. He takes good care of us. And part of me will always care for him. But no, we are not together anymore. I hugged her again, and she returned it. Then she gave me another look. Now, it seemed like you had something you wanted to talk to me about. She said pointedly as she released me. Yes. I scratched the back of my head nervously. It's about what I told Mitsuki Obasan. That was very kind of you, Mom said carefully. But of course. Mom, I have a power, I interrupted her. It happened the Dai Katsuki dayed. Ere day he died. Just woke up that morning, and I just had it. Are you sure? She asked slowly. I held up my right hand. You might have forgot what with everything that happened. I countered. But remember my hand? The split knuckles from punching the barrier? That wouldn't heal in just four days, right? She took my hand gently. Looked it over. Then she smiled, tearing up. Oh, Izuku. She grabbed me a third time. You have a quirk. What is it? It's not a quirk. I mused out loud. Or at least it says it isn't. What does that mean, Izuku? She looked confused and a little worried. I guess it might be fastest just to show you. I decided. Then I proclaimed firmly. Party invite Midoriya Inko. Izuka Midoriya has invited you to join his party. Except decline. I noticed that all the messages displayed our names in Western order. My mom looked at the box nervously. It's okay, mom. I reassured her. Just hit accept dot. She did. Now say status. I encouraged her. Status? She said questioningly. The window appeared before her, and I made it a point not to look at it. I explained to her everything I had read in the manual, and had seen for myself. I showed her my own status box, pointing out my quirk metagene negative qualifier. 
I got into a real role, but she didn't interrupt me. And health is equal to the sum of your physical attributes at level 1, plus half of your endurance, rounded up for each level you gain. I told her, finally petering out. Izuku, my mom said carefully. Have you thought about this? It might just be a hologram quirk, responding to your own thoughts and desires. The same thing with your fingers. I had considered that. I agreed. Tested it. But what about this? I flipped over to my inventory and took out the book. Handed it to her. Your father gave you this two years ago. She flipped it over, revealing the title, JavaScript 11 for noobs. It's real, right? I prompted. She nodded, but was holding back a protested that my possible illusion quirk might have concealed it. Hold on to it tight. I gently placed one finger on the book. This book contains the skills JavaScript ES11 and software methodology. Learning them will consume the book. Proceed with learning these skills. Accept decline. I hit accept without hesitating. Skill book used. Skill JavaScript ES11, LVL1 unlocked. Skill software methodology, LVL1 unlocked. Mom blinked as the book vanished, leaving a light coating of paper dust on her hands. I blinked because I unlocked what I guessed were both wit based skills, but my attribute did not improve. Then I looked at her again, and there was still doubt on my mom's face. Okay, I have one last thing to prove this is real. Izuku, honey, she said softly, but I plowed on ahead. I flipped over to the talents tab and scrolled to one of the two talents I had been thinking about buying first. I didn't think Key Initiate would convince Mom that it wasn't just an illusion, so I went instead with Telekinesis Basic. Then I flipped back over to the skills list. Three new unlocked skills has jumped to the top, Telekinesis, TK Attack, and TK Defense. I put my three unspent skill points into Telekinesis. Then I looked up at my Mom determinately. I pointed past her, into the kitchen. Without touching it, from a good three meters away, I turned on the sink. I picked up the dish towel and ran it under the water. I nearly dropped the towel as I turned the water off. Then I clumsily rang out the towel. My energy was draining faster than I would have expected. But I had just unlocked the lowest level talent, and my skill level was really low. All the more reason I needed practice. I unsteadily pulled the damp cloth over to my mom and held it out for her, saying, Sorry, I didn't know using a skill book would be that messy. After she wiped her hands off, I dusted the floor with the cloth, still not touching it. Then I set it next to the sink to add to the laundry later. So, um, what do you think? I asked nervously, silently praying she believed me. Izuku, she addressed me directly. Why are you going this far? Telling me all this, showing me all this? Even spending those points just to make a point, after telling me how rare they are? They might not be that rare, if I can just figure out how to gain XP and level up. I mumbled, but caught myself before I could plunge down my normal speculative rabbit hole. And I was going to buy telekinesis anyway, maybe just not until next level. But why? I grinned sheepishly and scratched the back of my head again. To be honest, I came clean. Part of it is because I got a quest telling me to tell you. And another part of it is I'm going to ask for an advance on my allowance. I need to train for the UA entrance exam. So I am going to need workout clothing, some training weights, and hopefully I can find some useful skill books at the bookstore. Then I took her hand and squeezed it gently. But mainly, I wanted to tell you. I wanted you to know that this isn't just a lark or a crazy dream. I didn't want you to worry about me getting hurt. And I didn't want to hide anything from you. She just looked at me for a moment. Then she smiled. Tell you what? She said happily. Why don't you go get cleaned up and dressed, and we will go out for breakfast to celebrate your quirk, or whatever this is. Then we can go shopping for supplies. But on one condition. Or make that too. What's that? I said carefully. First, this is just an advance on your normal allowance, she told me. 
We are not made of money. Unless you have a talent for that hidden somewhere. Not that I know of. I conceded to her joke. Yet. That's too bad. She sighed in mock despair. Then she sobered and said, Secondly, you leave me in your party, at least until you have a specific reason to remove me. That way, I can make sure you aren't getting hurt or going overboard. I can do that. I smiled. Then I will help you. She said, You can consider your first quest complete. I hooped and then kissed her on the cheek. Thanks, Mom. I told her as I darted back to my room. Midoriya Inko watched wistfully as her son hurried off to get ready. His determination filled her with guilt, especially considering his supposedly low value in the named attribute, plus a small amount of guilt that she had openly looked at his stats, while he avoided looking at hers. When had she started giving up? She had not said a word when her husband asked to put a legal hold on their relationship. She had not been able to comfort her son when reality tried to crush his dream, and she had let her fear and guilt drive her into the kitchen. No, it was even earlier than that. With Izuku out of the room, she flipped back to her talents. She only had three, with five talent points and used. Two were cooking and first aid. The third was her quirk, quirk, gravity pull eye. That was right eye. Immediately under it was a quirk, Gravity Pull 2, with a brief description. Under that was Quirk, Gravity Pull 3, grayed out except for the name. And below that, it branched off into three more talents, their details completely obscured. The Quirk she just accepted was weak, useless for anything more than mundane tasks, had multiple layers of hidden depths. But she had never known. She had never tried. Inko had just given up, accepted the hand she thought she was holding. No more, she said softly. I'm not giving up anymore. For myself and for my son. You have made a firm and heartfelt declaration. Determination plus one. Inko immediately purchased Quirk, Gravity Pull 2. That added more information to the third level, showing her that neither her skill with her Quirk nor her related attributes were high enough yet. She went back to the main screen and pumped her intuition and determination both up to 21. I don't have the skill points, she mumbled, not unlike her son. So I guess I'll just have to do it the hard way. She pulled the dirty towel over to herself and took it to the hamper. I stepped to the next shelf. I was in the reference section, running my fingers over the spines of the books, seeing which ones triggered my power. If they looked like they would be immediately useful, I'd put them into the basket. If not, or if I didn't qualify to use them yet, I just recorded the name to a list on my phone. Excuse me. I bowed to a man perusing cookbooks. He had messy hair, a five o'clock shadow, and a scar under his right eye. He seemed dangerous, though not like a bad person. So I made sure to be polite. No, excuse me. He stepped back and watched my ritual. Then I looked at the two books he was holding. I think that one is better. I suggested the one in his right hand, its counterpart on the shelf having triggered the gamer. Is that your quirk? He asked, his voice as rough as his appearance. Something like that? I said evasively, and hurried on the to next display. At the end of the shelf, I saw the bluet from Kakin's service. She was looking at college entrance books. Not feeling comfortable, and not wanting her to think I was a stalker, I ducked around to the back side of the shelf, which incidentally put me right in line with the main sort of books I was looking for. I only ended up getting eight new books, out of a list of dozens. I didn't want to be in debt until I graduated from UA. At the sporting goods store, I immediately selected a trio of tracksuits, based on All Might's bronze, silver, and gold age costumes, respectively. Unfortunately, when it came to training weights, I was at a bit of a loss. I even used the book on muscle training I bought to unlock the strength training skill, hoping it would give me pointers. But in the end I had to ask the salesperson for advice. A quick-witted young woman, with forearms like Popeye, she asked me about my plans, and then guided me to a modular set with a vest, wrist, 
and ankle bands. I bought two of the sets of weights to attach to them, knowing that I could buy more later. We got home just in time for lunch, and I helped mom out. Even though I was itching to use the new books and then ponder my new skills and future options. She seemed to sense that, and after we ate, she dismissed me from washing the dishes. Skill book used. Skill basic karate, LVL1 unlocked. Skill book used. Skill boxing, LVL1 unlocked. Skill book used. Skill parkour, LVL1 unlocked. Skill book used. Skill yoga, LVL1 unlocked. Skill book used. Chemistry basic skill improved, LVL2. Dot. Skill book used. Mathematics basic skill improved, LVL2. Dot. Skill book used. English language skill improved, LVL5. Dot. I looked at my new skills. Along with strength training I had already gained, I had a set of physical skills I thought would help me train, even if they weren't directly useful in the UA exam. The other three were to make it easier to pass this year, so I would need less time to study and have more time to train. Then I checked the attributes associated with my new skills. And like I thought, even though I had gained multiple skills today for wit, strength, and agility, none of them had improved. Maybe skill books don't trigger that. I'm used. Because I'm not actually working on the stat, like when I unlock the skill by learning it manually? You figured out a minor, intentional gap in the manual. Intuition plus one. Intentional, right. I noticed the system messages sometimes seem to have a personality. I leaned back in my chair and looked at the ceiling. It was April 29th. The exams were next March, the first and second, with results posted on the 8th. And tomorrow, April 30th, my training would begin in earnest. I packed all three tracksuits and my weights into my inventory. Only then did I notice the quest tab blinking. I jabbed the button as quickly as I could. The panel for oldest ally was also flashing. I touched it. Quest oldest ally complete. Claim the rewards? Accept decline? I suppose there might be a reason to save the rewards for a quest for a specific time. Like maybe to level up at a key moment. But I had no reason to wait. I all but punched except. Bonus talents received. Inventory 2 unlocked. Reflective dungeon unlocked. My eyes widened as I jumped over to the talents tab. Chapter 4. Lesson 4. Inventory 2. Increase inventory slots by 5. May equip items directly from inventory. My first new talent was straightforward enough. Instead of a 2x5 block in my inventory tab, I now had a 3x5 block. I tapped on my first track suit, and instead of just appearing in my hand, a new menu came up with two options, take and equip. I pressed equip, and instantly I was decked out like Silver Age All Might. More or less. And the shirt and pants I had been wearing were each taking up a block in the inventory grid. Next I tried the weight gear. The bracelets appeared on my wrists, and I could feel the anklets on my legs. I could also feel the vest, but it was under the tracksuit. They were somewhat heavy on their own, enough for a weaker guy like me to start with. But just to test, I equipped one of the weight sets, watching as the metal bars appeared clipped to my bracelets. While I could still move around like that, it was slow and draining. So I took them back off. Then I switched back to my original outfit. But I kept the bracelets, anklets, and vest in place. The simpler talent tested, I went back to the tab to read over and think over the other one again. Reflective Dungeon Transports you and your party to an alternate dimension dungeon asterisk representing the essence of a single selected source person or item. Defeat enemies, and complete quests when offered, in the dungeon to enhance the source in some fashion. As well as reap the benefits you would expect from defeating foes in a dungeon crawl. But be careful, the better the source, the more dangerous the reflection. Asterisk despite the terminology, a reflective dungeon is not necessarily a maze or cavern. It could just as easily be an open field or an ethereal wonderland. 
It sounded like an old game series my grandpa had described to me. You could go inside your equipment to improve its stats, and sometimes get special abilities. Or go inside your characters, to improve their growth rates or unlock unique skills. Was such a thing really possible? Asks the guy who just got telekinesis by pressing a button on a virtual RPG display. I reminded myself, and it doesn't actually say it does anything like those games. Enhance the source in some fashion seems deliberately vague. I also wondered about the benefits from defeating foes in a dungeon part. I guessed at least it meant XP. But could it also mean that the enemies would drop items? Or even gold? I sighed and closed the window. There wasn't much I could do with it now. I wasn't ready to test it, especially if I would drag my mom along with me. I would definitely have to talk about it with her first. And she would definitely worry. Plus I needed to get my homework done today, so I could focus on training tomorrow. I got off the bus. Before me there was a small parking lot, an even smaller restroom building, a picnic bench, a moderately impressive sign, and then a forest. Though the word didn't do it justice. Indora Forest Park had been an industrial park about 40 years ago. A seven-story office building, a trio of factories, a huge parking lot. The lake near the center had been kept clean, if only so the executives looking over it had a nice view. The stream coming out the lake had been far less pristine. Until the day a group of eco-terrorist villains decided to destroy it. The heroes back then had fought back and captured the villains. But in the end, the villains won. The buildings had been damaged beyond repair. In the end, another group bought the land. They removed all traces of industry and brought in people with plant quirks and similar abilities. Today it looked like a section of the old California redwood forest had been transplanted to Japan. And it was unspoiled, cleaner than almost any other Japanese park. Though given its history and who managed it, Indoru did not get a lot of visitors, and the ones who did were more respectful than average. In short, it was a great place to start training. Almost 80 square kilometers of woods, and I was probably going to be the only one here. Checking to make sure no one was around to see, I switched over to my training gear. Okay, first things first. I mumbled. I locked onto the sign and proclaimed. Analyze. Indora Forest Park sign. Age, 22 years. Material, black oak and redwood. A simple yet high-quality park sign. I shifted my gaze and repeated. Analyze. Indora Park Public Restrooms. Five individual, unisex, three-quarters bath restrooms. Cleanliness, A- dash. Analyze. Lockers. 16 lockers. 100 yen for the day. Analyze. Picnic bench. Standard table with built-in bench seats. Seats 8, 10 if they are small or willing to squeeze in. Analyze. Redwood tree. Grown from a seed recovered from the U.S. National Park destroyed during the unrest caused by the quirk phenomenon. Actual age is 31 years, but due to a plant growth manipulation quirk, its effective age is 214 years. Analyze. A patch of dirt. Were you maybe trying to look at something else? Your curiosity and vigilance have paid off. Analyze skill improved. LVL2. Analyze. Tracksuit. A tracksuit of above average quality, patterned after All Might's Bronze Age costume. Durability 35 35 That's new, I think, I muttered as I started walking across the parking lot. I looked at the same tree again. I wonder if. Analyze? Redwood tree. Grown from a seed from the U.S. National Park destroyed during the unrest caused by the quirk phenomenon. Actual age is 31 years, but due to quirk growth acceleration, its effective age is 214 years. Health, 2340-2349. Wow. I wondered what would happen if I used Analyze on other people, but I hadn't done it yet. A combination of fear and politeness had stopped me. 
If I raise the skill level, it seems to provide more information. I muse. Maybe I should try it on another person as a baseline. But that's for later. I headed into the forest. Not too deep. I didn't want to get lost. I mean, I still had my phone, safely stored in my inventory. But I wasn't sure how good the reception was here. And my mom also knew I was here. She suggested it, Indora being only about a half-hour bus ride from our apartment. And a relatively secluded place, where I wasn't likely to be discovered. I walked through the trees and brush until I couldn't see the rest area. Then I went another 10 meters deeper, just to be safe. I picked one of the larger redwoods and analyzed it, to make sure it wasn't actually rotten and liable to fall over on me if I hit it. Then I looked around, and found a broken off branch from one of the smaller trees that occasionally managed to grow between the giants. Okay, I went over my plan again. Step 1, analyze everything. Trees, brush, hopefully some birds or squirrels will pass by. Goal, raise the level of analyze and hopefully my wit, too. Step 2, telekinesis. Pick up that branch, hold it 25 centimeters above the ground. Goal, grind my TK skill level, and probably my intuition, too. Also work on multitasking, so that simple uses of TK become almost second nature. Step 3, shadow boxing. Attack the tree as hard as I can, but stopping just short of hitting it. Goal, grind my combat skill levels, and hopefully all of my physical attributes, too. I'll keep doing all three at the same time, until it is lunchtime, or I am too tired to continue. But I doubt my energy will last that long, so I may have to stop using TK sooner. I nodded to myself, fairly confident in my plan for the morning. In the afternoon, depending on how much energy, rather than energy, I had left, I was hoping to do some free running through the forest. Try to self-unlock the skills climbing, running, and acrobatics to go with my parkour. Otherwise, I might just end up doing yoga. Here we go. I exhaled. I looked at the branch, focused my power, and lifted. It started hovering just above the soil. Now analyze. Japanese cedar branch. A limb broken off of a Japanese cedar during a recent storm. Currently floating 22 centimeters above the ground. It's not supposed to be doing that. Durability, 8 out of 8. Good, I said. Then stop looking at the branch, while trying not to let it slip. I dropped into a boxing stance. I started to pepper the trunk with punches, occasionally ducking around imaginary counters. Most of my strikes stopped well short of the tree. In fact, further back than I wanted. But not all of them. Dash one health. It hurt for just a moment when I made contact with the bark. But there were no marks on my skin, and the pain was gone before I had finished checking my knuckles. Active HUD, I said, not wanting to let my health drop too far. Analyze. Redwood tree. Another one. Actual age is 31 years, but due to quirk growth acceleration, its effective age is 188 years. Health, 1849-1928 Dash 1 Health If I couldn't control myself better, then I might have to quit for the day earlier than I wanted or expected. You have maintained your telekinesis for an extended period and through multiple distractions. Telekinesis skill improved. LVL4. Dot. Okay, so far so good. Dash 2 health. Ow. I groaned. This time my health was low enough that I did scrape my knuckles. But I had a different reason to hit the tree this time. After Analyze reached level 5, it had stopped improving. I decided there were only so many times I could scan the same trees. I kept up with the martial arts and psychic powers. My attributes had all gone up at least one point, except for charisma and luck. And so had boxing, karate, and telekinesis. I let myself get complacent, and so I was surprised when bright flash of white shot through the trees maybe 50 meters away from me and 10 meters up. It was probably some sort of bird, but it was gone before I could scan or even properly see it. In the meantime, the distraction made me drop the stick, 
and punched the tree far harder than any of my previous accidents. You have taken multiple impacts from something far sturdier than you are. Skill Physical Resistance, LVL1 Unlocked I checked out the new skill, and blinked. It hadn't been on the visible, available list of skills before, so it must have had a secret activation. Whatever the case, physical resistance was a passive skill that literally and simply reduced damage I took from physical attacks, including self-inflicted ones. Damage reduction was 0.5% per level of the skill, which meant if I could grind or buy the skill up to maximum level, any physical damage I took would be automatically halved. After I finished ogling my new ability, I took stock. The stick was on the ground. My health was just below half, and my energy was at about 10%. Plus it was only 43 minutes to noon. Lunchtime, I decided. I couldn't sleep, but hoped some food and rest would help restore me for the afternoon. Despite the damage and lack of energy, I wasn't tired and was only moderately sweating. I jogged back to the rest area, analyzing the non-redwood trees I occasionally saw. When I got back, I had this odd feeling. So I walked over to the lockers, opened one that was not in use. I took the towel and lunch my mom had given me out of inventory, using the locker for cover. As I closed it, I heard the squeak of a door pull in need of oil. Your insight serves you well. Intuition plus one. A girl turned the corner from the bathrooms to the outside wall with the lockers, and we both froze in surprise. She was about my height. She had really long green hair, a shade darker than mine. And her hair was tied in a bow. Not tied up with a bow, her actual hair was drawn into a bow shape and knotted. She had large eyes and a wide mouth with a slightly protruding upper lip. Her nose and ears were both small. All in all, she looked kind of like a frog. Normally that would have been an insult, but somehow on her it looked really cute. She was wearing green sweatpants and a white tank top. She was fairly slender, except, very obviously at the moment, in the chest. The tank was plastered with sweat, accentuating the shape of her breasts and showing her bra through it. Excuse me. I bowed slightly, shifted so she could get past me. She opened up another locker and took out a brown bag. Would you like to use this? I held out my towel towards her. Thanks, but I don't mind being wet, ribbit, she said flatly. Okay. I bowed again, and then hurried over to the picnic table. I sat down and unpacked my lunch. A few seconds later, she joined me, sitting on the opposite side and opposite end of the table. It wasn't really surprising. I think I saw you out in the forest earlier, I said. Are you here training too? She looked at me for a moment, as if sizing me up. Then she slid a little closer. I am, she answered. What are you training for? I'm trying to get into UA, I said. In the hero course. She glanced at me again, her lips pursed dubiously. That wasn't a surprise either, given my height and build at that point. So am I, she admitted. I guess that makes us rivals. I just nodded, thinking that meant the conversation was done. Then, feeling a bit guilty, I whispered, Analyze. Name, Tsuyu Ajri. Race, Human, Quirk Metagene Positive. Age, 14. Level 4. Active Title, Frog Girl. Health, 192-194. Stamina, 70-95. Wow, she had even more health than my mom, and my mom was level 16. And yes, I had looked at the party page, which showed my party members' levels, health, and any of the gauges that gamers' body rolled into energy. I hadn't seen anyone besides the three of us, so Ajui San either had really high attributes for her level or some talents that increased her health. Or my mom and I were both well below the curve. Or maybe a little of each. We ate in silence, Ajui San finishing well before me, and vanishing back into the trees. I still went through the motions of pretending to put my stuff back in the locker. Woohoo! I yelled softly in delight. I was running through the forest as quickly as I could, jumping over or off roots. 
bounding off the trees, sometimes scrambling up them a few steps before flipping backwards. I fell a few times, apparently enough to level up physical resistance. I also unlocked running and climbing, but they were different attributes, so no bonuses there. Still, all physical stats had gone up further. But none of that was the reason I was softly celebrating. Level up. Level 3. Attribute points, plus 7. Skill points, plus 3. Talent points, plus 1. Unlike a game, my health and energy did not completely refill. However, the current values went up by the same amount as the maximum values. I guess new health and energy points were full by default. The scrapes on my hand literally vanished as my HP went back over half full. I put an attribute point into luck, which I had decided to do at every level. But I decided to save my talent for now, no matter how inviting Key Initiate looked. Crack. I heard the sound of wood snapping. I looked up and saw Azri Sen dropping out of the sky. A tongue, longer than an SUV, was running from her mouth up to the broken branch. I scrambled, figuring where she would hit. I wasn't confident I could catch her. But I was a softer landing than the hard-packed dirt, and I hoped my new resistance and health would let me survive. I also pushed her back with my TK. Her momentum and mass were too much for me to stop, but I was able to slow her down, giving me an extra moment to get into place, and also reducing the force of our impact. She let go of the branch, and her tongue shot out for another one. It further helped put on the brakes, but her new tongue hold was too low and she was moving too fast. She was still definitely going to hit. She did. She hit me square in the chest. I tried to brace myself and even skidded back and stayed upright. At first. Then physics kicked in and we both tumbled. I managed somehow to keep both myself under her and keep my head from hitting anything. After a second collecting herself, she hopped off of me, and then helped me up. Are you okay? I asked her anxiously. Yes, she nodded. I've had worse falls, but thanks to you I'm pretty much fine. But something about the way she shivered made me think she was not being entirely honest. Still, I didn't press. Thank goodness, I smiled. What about you? She countered. I glanced at the HUD. Health was now 15 to 35, down 10. I had probably had a damage alert, but missed it in the moment. I might have a bruise, but I'll be okay. I told her. Why did you do that? She asked. I couldn't let you get hurt. I said with a hint of sadness. Not if I could help. I wouldn't be much of a hero otherwise. But I'm your rival, Ribbit. She looked confused. Well, I grinned sheepishly and shrugged. It's not like they only let one or two people into you, eh? And even if it were somehow down to you or me, I still wouldn't want to win that way. Would you? I guess not, she agreed. Then she smiled, and she was a lot more than just cute. Thank you, um... Sorry, I said quickly. I'm Midoriya Izuku, and you are welcome. I knew her name, of course but couldn't very well say it. Ajri Tsuyu, she supplied. Nice to meet you, Ajri san I held out my hand. Please take care of me, Midoriya Kuen. She gave the customary response and shook my hand. You know, she tilted her head and brought a finger up to her lips. If we are both going to be training here, maybe we should work out together. There might be things we can learn from each other. Like you can teach me some of those fighting moves, and I could show you how to better control your body when hopping around. Oh, you saw that. I was embarrassed, but also wondered if she had seen the hovering branch. Bits and pieces, she confirmed. I was moving pretty quickly and the trees were in the way. Well, I'd be very happy to work with you, Ajri San. Why don't you call me to see you? She smiled again. Congratulations. You made a new friend, and a girl no less. Charisma plus one. Chapter five. Izuku, honey, are you all right? My mom asked as soon as I was through the door. I'm fine, mom, 
I told her, unable to keep a grin off my face. Not only had I gotten to sit next to a cute girl for much of bus ride home. After Ajri San exited, I was able to check my status. I was more than pleased with my improvements after the day of training. I guessed I was still below average physically, and the higher my attributes got, the harder it would be to improve them further. But if I could keep this going. But your health kept going up and down, she said worriedly. And then it took that huge drop about an hour and a half ago. It went up any time my attributes improved, I reminded her. And sometimes I missed and hit the trees, so I took some damage. But I got a damage reduction skill out of it. And remember, as long as I'm above zero health, I'm okay. As I recall, she said a bit sharply, as long as you are above half health, you are okay. Below that, you actually get injured. And even if they aren't terrible, and you can heal completely overnight, I don't want you getting too close to zero. Even at zero, I would have been technically fine. The manual called it incapacitated. I would probably get knocked out with my current endurance. If it was higher, I might remain awake, just not able to move quickly or think clearly. It was when my health, or anyone's really, went below zero that it was an issue. I wouldn't actually die until I had negative health greater than my endurance. Like right now, I would still be alive up to negative 8 HP. But at negative 9. The problem was, at negative 1 health, you got the dying condition. Which meant you kept losing health. How quickly depended on how far below zero you were. Like if a guy with 100 endurance was at negative 1 HP, it might take him an hour or two to go down to negative 2. But if I was at minus 8, it would only be seconds before I lost that last point. Why did you suddenly take so much damage? She demanded. Well, my smile resurfaced. I wasn't the only one training in the forest. The branch the other person was hanging from broke, and I just happened to be close enough to catch her. You caught her? My mom wore a conspiratorial grin. For a second, I confirmed. Then we fell and I hit my back pretty hard. My tracksuit didn't look damaged, but it lost a lot of durability. Her expression darkened. Shirt off. She ordered immediately. I complied, grimacing slightly. Izuku, she chided me. Your back is a giant bruise. I couldn't just let her fall, I argued softly. I know, honey, she agreed gently. It's just... And now I know her, and we talked about training together. I told mom after she trailed off. So we can help and look out for each other. I suppose that's a good thing. Mom said thoughtfully, as she to the kitchen and back. But I'll be wanting to meet this girl. Mom, I complained. Okay, whined. Here, she said. Ibuprofen. Then we'll have dinner, and you can get to bed early. Rest from today and let your power patch you up. And I can still go back after school tomorrow? I prompted. Yes, you can keep training, Mom confirmed. Just please try to be careful. I will. Izuku, honey, my mom caught me before I left for school the next morning. I want you to take this, keep it in your inventory. Just in case. She handed me a large first aid kit. I accepted it and stored it without complaint. Good afternoon, Ajri san I jogged over to her after getting off the bus and sketched a quick bow. Good afternoon, Midoriya san she nodded to me. And call me to see you. But you didn't call me Izuku. I pointed out. You didn't ask me to. She reminded me. I guess not. I agreed. But I am now. If I'm going to call you by your given name, please call me by mine. Okay, izuku kun She smiled slightly. I grinned happily at her. So where do you want to start Siyu Chan? I asked her. Do you want to go first? She asked back. Show me some martial arts? Okay, I said. I should warn you, I'm a bit of a beginner too. But I'll be happy to show you what I know. How do you normally fight? I focus on kicks, mostly. And my tongue, which I'm guessing your style wouldn't cover. Well, it could be like a punch. 
I muse, though the movements aren't the same. Still, if we consider good places for upper body strikes. Can I ask you something? So you queried me on the bus trip back. After working on karate for a while, and help her with her stances and blocking, we switched to free running though the woods. So you pointed out how to aim for the flattest areas of the trees, and time my kickoffs. We raced back just in time to catch the 6.30 bus, Sue so you saying she needed to be back by 7. Of course, I said immediately. It seems like you are training really hard, she said, almost desperately. Why is that? Oh, um, I stammered a bit and smiled sadly. Well, you see, I always wanted to be a hero. I've studied them my whole life. And my friend did, too. Last Tuesday, he was killed by a villain. That explosion boy on the news? The one that Endeavor couldn't save? She prompted. Yes. I nodded. His mom was really hurting. So I ended up promising that I would become a hero for both of us. I see. She said thoughtfully. But there's a bit more to it. I continued. You see, when I was four, I was told by a doctor that I was quirkless. But last week, the day before Kakin died, in fact, I got a power. Back then, I assumed the gamer appeared after I punched the barrier. Even now, I'm still not entirely sure when it happened. Besides, I was excited to talk about powers and was talking to a girl. Even gamer's mind has its limits. I'm still trying to figure it out, I told her. And I only have until next March to do that and get strong enough to make it into UA. And can I ask what your power is? Sia said carefully. It seems to be sort of a self-improvement power. I told her just as carefully. I heal almost anything overnight, and if I work really hard, my natural abilities grow faster than most people. Hmm, that makes sense, she said. You did pick up what I showed you really fast. And what about you, eh? Suyu chan? I asked back. You seem to be working just as hard as I am. You could have really hurt yourself in that fall yesterday. I have to help take care of my brother and sister, she answered after considering it for a moment. I don't have a lot of time to train, so I have to make the most of it, Ribbit. Yesterday was an exception, most Sundays I'd be with them, but yesterday they went to a friend's birthday party. See you. I grabbed her hand lightly. I'll do everything I can to make sure I don't waste a minute of your precious free time. Thanks, Izuka-kun. Me too. The next week went by like a blur. We met every day after school, Ajri was always there first. Her school was more traditional, she still had a half day of classes on Saturday. But I waited for her after my morning training, and we had lunch together before working out in the afternoon. Sunday, like she said, she wasn't there, so I took it easier for my mom. It was the second Thursday after we met, and when I got to the park, Ajri wasn't waiting for me. I wondered if she had gone ahead for some reason, or was in one of the restrooms, changing. But I waited a bit, and then checked. They were all empty. So were the lockers. I went to the edge of the entrance area, staring into the forest as hard as I could and occasionally triggering Analyze. I didn't want to go further in, in case she was just running late. But when five o'clock rolled around and she still wasn't there, I headed in, checked all of our usual spots, and spread out from there, just in case. I made it back just in time for the last bus. There had been no sign of her. Izuku, what's wrong? Mom was waiting by the door, since I was late but she noticed my expression as soon as I came in and grew worried instead of scolding me. Mom, has there been anything on the news? I asked quickly. Any accidents? Or villain attacks? My mind couldn't help but go straight to Kakin and what had happened to him. No, nothing like that, she answered. Why? Ajri Sem wasn't at the Endora today, I told her. She said yesterday that she would see me today, but she never showed up. I looked all over the forest, in case she got hurt, but there was no sign of her. I'm worried something might have happened. Even if it wasn't a villain attack, she still might have been kidnapped. 
secretly, I was worried that I had driven her off. Done or said something stupid. I knew she wasn't the type to do that, but I couldn't help but remember my life until now. Did you call her? Mom asked. I... I blinked. I don't have her number. You don't? I always kept my phone in my inventory to keep it safe. I answered. And I haven't exactly had a lot of people to exchange numbers with. And I never saw her phone either. Maybe her parents don't let her have one. I considered that and wilted a bit. I'm a terrible friend. I said. I barely know anything about her. Izuku. My mom grabbed my shoulders lightly. Don't think the worst yet. Maybe she is sick or got caught up at school. And you didn't ask for her phone number. But she didn't ask for yours either. I nodded. Just go back there tomorrow. Mom advised me. If she isn't there again, then we can start to worry. Try to see if we can find her. And if she is there, make sure to at least ask for her number. Or give her yours if she doesn't have a cellular of her own. I nodded again. Despite my mom's reassurances and gamer's mind, I was still a bit of a wreck the next day at school. I still gave it my all. Now that Kaken was gone, I was determined to make it to number two in our grade. Since I knew I could never take number one away from Mizuno-san. At least not without min-maxing to focus on my mental attributes and skills. There was a familiar figure, standing by the picnic table. I ran across the parking lot, and just barely restrained myself from hugging her. Ajui-san, I said quickly. You're here. I was. I was worried. Sorry, she said then added. And call me to see you. Right, Tsuyu chan I corrected myself. And you don't have to be sorry. But I was thinking, if you don't mind, maybe we could exchange phone numbers? In case something happens. She brightened up at that, and fished out her phone. I got mine out too, and a quick IR exchange added us to each other's contact list. I should have thought of that earlier, she admitted. But I've only ever exchanged numbers with one friend before. You are my first phone friend, I told her. Not your friend who? She trailed off, not wanting to remind me. We had drifted apart before my mom let me get a phone, I told her. Then I looked her in the eye and asked carefully, Is it okay if I ask what happened yesterday? My sister was sick, she said. Her quirk makes her sensitive to light, and she is still learning to control it. When she doesn't, she gets symptoms like a migraine. But it's not a migraine, so migraine medicines don't work on it. So I had to pick her up from school and take care of her. I did think about you, but didn't have any way to contact you. I wasn't even sure if you had a phone. Me too, I told her. I was thinking, I've been so focused on our training that I've been a bad friend and haven't really gotten to know you. So, let's start over a bit. I bowed to her. Hello? My name is Midoriya Izuku, age 14. I'm a third year at Aldera Junior High in Musatafa. I live in Musatafa with my mother, while my father works in America. Pleased to meet you, please take care of me. Tsuyu smiled, and bowed as well. My name is Azri Tsuyu, age 14. I'm a third year at Danchun Academy in Hosu. Then she frowned slightly, trailing off. Izuku, I wasn't exactly honest with you, she said. I said I helped take care of my brother and sister. But actually, my parents work out of the country most of the time. All around Europe and Australia. We're lucky if either one of them is home more than a week each month. We get help from neighbors, and my aunt checks in sometimes. But mostly I take care of them. That's why I need to be back by seven. Their school has programmed for parents who work later or have a long travel time, but I need to pick them up before then. Sorry I didn't tell you. It's okay, I told her. We've only known each other a week. I studied her for a moment then asked. Tsuyu chan do you trust me? I think so, she answered, putting her finger to her lips and tilting her head. Why? I want us to skip training, I said. And I want you to come with me somewhere. Where? Home, I told her. 
My mom has been asking to meet you, and I think it's a good idea. You want me to babysit? My mother parroted. You want her to babysit? Tsuya asked. Azri agreed to come home with me. I introduced her to mom, and mom to her. We talked briefly about training, and then I convinced Tsuya to tell mom about herself. Then I presented my idea. Well, I was hoping if you two got along, and if you were willing and Tsuya thought her siblings would be okay with it. I explained. Then she could bring them over on Sundays, or at least some Sundays, and you could watch them while we train. They both considered it, and considered each other. No offense to Ajri san or her parents, mom said, but I don't like the idea of a 14-year-old girl being primary caregiver to two young children. I'm sure you've done a fine job, but you really should have more time to yourself to be a teenage girl. I can't really disagree with that, Tsuyo admitted. I love my brother and sister, and know my parents are working hard for our family, but it can be tough sometimes. So then, I prompted. Ajri san mom addressed her. What if you and your brother and sister come over this Sunday? We can all get to know each other. And then if you are all okay with it, we can do something like what Izuku suggested. You all can come over on Sundays. I will watch your siblings while you two train, and then we can all have dinner together. And I'd also like you to have my phone number, in case anything like yesterday happens, or just if you need some help in general. What do you think? I think you are a very nice lady, Azri said, like your son. So I think we can try it. And call me Tsuyu. I like your mom, Tsuyu told me, when she arrived at the park the next day. And I am looking forward to tomorrow. She likes you too? May ended, and June began, and with it Tsuyu's namesake, the infamous Japanese rainy season. Though so far it had been lighter than usual so we had been able to keep training. A couple of downpours had got us, but we had discovered a rocky outcropping, almost a shallow cave, that we could hide in. We were back around to Sunday, the third one in June. My mom and the Azri kids, Samidare and Satsuki, were now well used to spending the day together. And Samidare had said he liked, liked Inko Obasan's cooking much better than Big Sis's slop, to Tsuyu's annoyance and my mom's embarrassment. We got off the bus and went into separate bathroom stalls to change. Though I just used inventory to swap, I also now had the first set of weights attached to my gear. So what should we do today? I asked, pantomiming putting my bag in a locker and dropping a coin in. You didn't like boxing, so we could go back to karate. I have another idea, she said. Okay, what is it? I asked curiously. It's a surprise. Just follow me. We had pretty well explored Endora Park by now. I wouldn't have said we knew every nook and cranny, but we were not going to easily get lost there. Still, we tended to stay close to the entrance, simply for access to the facilities. Tsuya led me deeper in than usual, but it didn't take me long to figure out where we were going. The tree lean broke, and we walked out onto the beach surrounding the lake. We had come here occasionally, to run on the sand for the extra resistance, or just to cool our feet in the water after a hard day's workout. So I wasn't sure at first how this qualified as a surprise. Until Tsuyu reached down to the hem of her shirt and started to lift it. Azri san I squeaked, closing my eyes. What are you doing? Hmm? What did you say? Tsuyu didn't correct me about her name and her normally flat voice had an unusual tone I didn't recognize. What are you doing? I'm taking off my shirt, she said evenly. Otherwise it would get wet. I couldn't help myself. I peeked. With her shirt off, I could see she wasn't wearing a bra. No, no, not like that. She had on a bikini top. Not like a sexy one either. It was a sporty one, in two tones of green. It only showed a little cleavage, but revealed all of her shoulders and her toned stomach. You are going swimming, I realized. Well, I was hoping you would too, she said. It's a good low-impact, resistance workout. Plus, it's an important skill for heroes to have. 
You never can tell when you might face a villain with water powers, or just by a body of water. As she said that, she undid the tie on her pants, and dropped them, revealing a matching boy short tight bottoms. I tried not to stare, but it was tough. But I, I don't have a swimsuit with me. I stammered a bit. I don't even know if my old one still fits. Well, your tracksuit is like a swimsuit, she suggested. Lightweight synthetic materials that shed water. Just take off your top, shoes, and weights, and roll up your pants. Take off my shirt? I looked at her. Well, you would have to anyway if you were in a swimsuit. She deadpanned. Then another head tilt and finger raised later, she added. Unless you wore one of those weird, old-fashioned swimsuits. But who would want to do that? I grimaced and nodded. I partially undressed like she suggested, and secretly transferred my boxers into me inventory, so they wouldn't get soaked. As I did, I noticed her eyes locked onto me, her expression hard to read. I knew it. I mumbled, and jumped into the water so I could hide myself. No need to be in such a hurry, Sia said. Mom, I turned to her after the Ajui siblings left for the night. I know I said I wouldn't ask for anything else after my training gear and books. But, well, I kind of need a new swimsuit. Sia thinks I need to get better at swimming and... For a moment, I could have sworn I saw the kanji in her eyes. Chapter 6 You have had a proper meal and a good night's sleep. Health and energy fully restored. I waved away the message, having gotten used to it. Almost every night I was down a little health and a lot of energy from the day's training. Especially on the weekends, and today was Monday. The last Monday in June, meaning summer vacation was just around the corner. The second message that immediately popped up was far less common. Quest alert. Duel duel. Test both your training and your friendship with Tsuyu Ajui by challenging her to a race and winning. Rewards. Plus one level to all skills used in the race. One bonus talent point. Failure penalties. None. Time limit, 13 days. Accept decline. I almost hit decline. No matter how much better I had gotten, Ajui was still a lot faster and stronger than me. I hadn't seen her attributes, but it wouldn't have surprised me to find out they were two or even three times higher than mine. Beyond that, the way it was worded made me nervous. Test your friendship. What did that mean? Would she be angry if I won? So you didn't seem like that sort of person. Given I hadn't really won at anything against her yet, I couldn't be sure. Or maybe it was the other way. If I challenged her and lost, would she be disappointed? I was pretty sure she would be upset if I held back. But other than pulling her back with my TK, there wasn't much chance of that. I finally hit accept, and then hopped out of bed. Good morning, Nizuku, Mom said as I walked into the kitchen. Good morning, Mom, I responded. Anything special on the agenda for today? She asked, setting bowls of rice and miso soup, and a plate of sausages on the table for me. Test results in school, I reminded her. Hopefully I'll make number two in our grade and number one in our class. Then training like normal. Though I did get a quest this morning to challenge Tsuyu Chan to a race and win by a week from this Sunday. Do you think you can do it? Mom asked. You said she is still a lot faster and more maneuverable than you are. There's no penalty, so it doesn't hurt to try. I told her. And I have been wondering it I've been trying hard enough. This might just give me the push I need. All right, she said evenly. Just don't get either of you hurt doing this. Also, I'm going to be busy today. How does pizza sound for dinner? Sure, sounds good. I told her, then offered the traditional benediction. Thank you for the meal. I had brushed my teeth using TK to apply the toothpaste and hold the brush. Since I couldn't use telekinesis while training with Ajui, I needed to find ways to use it around the apartment. Brushing was a good way to practice fine movements. It netted me a level in both skills, so I must have done a pretty good job. After lunch they posted the test results, 
and I was pleased to have made second. Mizunosen was number one as always, scoring perfect, or sometimes better. She never checked the scores, so I had never met her. I guess I couldn't even be sure she was correct. She could have been a boy with a feminine name, which might explain why she never checked the board. Smiling slightly, I turned to head back to class, only for a hand to grab my shoulder. Don't think you can get away with this, you worthless, quirkless nerd. Longfingers snarled at me. Just because Bakugakun is gone, doesn't mean you can take his place. Technically, I knew his name back then, even if I forgot it before I graduated high school. But none of Kakan's cronies deserve that level of recognition. I was tempted to point out that I had always been in third or fourth place, and the only reason Kakan was always number two was because of his exceptional grade in physical education. Grades I was now getting close to meeting. Instead I got angry. What do you care? I countered, knocking his hand off. You weren't his real friend. You just wanted to coast on his popularity. You didn't even come to his funeral. That got a few gasps, and also more than a few chagrin looks. Most of them were also guilty of that, and they knew it. Why you piece of... Longfingers tried to punch me, but I casually slipped out of the way. His fingers extended all the way, making his fist even larger, and he tried again. Between my karate and dodge skills, and increased attributes, it was easy to avoid him. Part of me wanted to block, or even trip him. But he wasn't worth it. I didn't want to risk getting in trouble over him. So even as he wound up for a third attack, I turned and walked away. Good afternoon, see you chan I called out jogging from the bus to her. Good afternoon, izuka -kun. She greeted me in kind. You seem to be in a good mood today. Well, I grinned sheepishly. I made it to the number two spot in my grade at my school today, and when one of the bullies tried to attack me because of it, he couldn't lay a finger on me. That does sound like a good day. She nodded. But only number two. With as smart as you are and the way your quirk seems to work. No, our school has a genius. I shook my head. She, or maybe he, I guess, since I don't know this person, has been the best in our grade for all three years of middle school, and is supposedly the top rank in the whole country on mock exams. That is impressive, Tsuyo admitted. In that case, I think anyone would be fine with number two. Right? I nodded. So what do you want to do today? She asked me. Climbing? Or maybe some karate forms? We weren't swimming on the weekdays, both due to the more limited time, and because it could get a little chilly in the late afternoon and early evening. Or at least, that was the excuse I gave Azuri. Actually, I was thinking. I started carefully. I know you don't want to spar, and I agree. But what about another competition? We may be friends, but we are still rivals, right? So we should push each other. At least as much as I can push you at this point. She went into her customary thinking pose before prompting. What did you have in mind? A race, I said. From the picnic table to the lake. No direct interference, but otherwise no holds barred. First one to dip their toes in the water wins. That could be fun, and a good test of what we've be practicing. She mused. Sure, why not? And after you beat me, I continued. Then we can work on forms. You don't think you will win? She asked. Not today, I told her. I'm hoping by Friday, I'll be able to get close. It turns out that was a bit ambitious. The first day she beat me by over a minute. By Friday, I had increased my attributes and skills a bit and learned the best route. I was still 20 seconds behind her. Not that being behind her didn't have its advantages. I could study how she moved through the terrain and it gave me something to shoot for. But after Friday's training and dinner, I sat on my bed, looking up at my status window. I need something more if I'm going to beat her, I mumbled. I almost want to analyze her again, to see if the skill is high enough yet to show me her attributes or skills. But that's not fair or good. Still, what do I have? I have 14 unspent attribute points. 
If I put them all into quickness? No, that would be too unbalanced. Maybe if I split them between quickness, agility, and endurance? But I didn't want to spend points too early. The higher my stats get, the harder they will be to increase through training, which means it will be better to have the attribute points later. I looked at skills, but didn't really see anything new for racing. Though I did remind myself that I should try to unlock telekinetic attack, since it was now open. Of course, the first thing I looked at on the talents tab was key initiate. It offered four new skills, key detection, key projection, key regeneration, and key reinforcement. That last one was the reason I was considering it again. It would let me use my energy to temporarily boost physical attributes. The amount of the boost depended on my level in that skill level, determination attribute, and the number of key talents I had. The talents also determined how many attributes I could split the bonus between. Except 8 days probably wouldn't give me enough time to improve the skill or attribute that much. So it probably wouldn't be enough for me to win with. There was another talent that I thought might do it. Free Runner was a physical version of the studious talent I had possessed before gaining the gamer. Per the description, it would increase the rate at which my agility and quickness scores improved by 25% and the same thing for any related skills. It would give me a chance of growing enough in the next eight days, and would continue to be useful going forward. And if I did complete the quest, the bonus talent point would replace the one I spent buying it. I looked over the list of available talents again, and even the ones that were not available but also not hidden. And I kept going back to Free Runner. Somehow it just felt right. If I had gotten a message telling me my intuition improved, I would have bought it immediately. Even with this power, things weren't that cut and dried. Arg! I grabbed the side of my head and shook it in frustration. Fine. I took the quest. I'll just have to go with my gut. I reached out and hit the unlock button under the free runner talent. Talent free runner acquired. Agility plus three, quickness plus three. Wait, that wasn't in the talent description, I said. Did I also get bonuses to wit and intuition when I subconsciously bought Studious? Will I get intuition and charisma bonuses if I buy natural empath? Real life is more fluid than a game and doesn't come with a full manual or walkthrough. Intuition plus one. Okay, that was good to know, I guess. For now, I needed to focus on how to outrun CU. Today, dodgeball again, our teacher told us. A large portion of the class groaned, and Longfingers and Kakin's other former cronies looked excited. In fact, Longfingers was glaring specifically at me. The whistle blew, and most of my classmates scrambled for the five balls. I did not. Nowhere to run this time, shitty Deku. Longfingers gloated, he and two friends approaching the middle line. Each was holding one of the four balls their side had recovered. The other members of my team scrambled to the sides of the gym, more than willing to let me take the punishment. I wish I could say I said something cool or clever, but I just clenched my fists and then uncurled them. One ball flew straight at my face, despite that being a foul. The second was aimed at my crotch, despite that just being bad form. The third was aimed at my right side, trying to hem me in. The last armed member of their team, while not standing with the bullies, was waiting to counter if I managed to somehow avoid getting knocked out. I went down on one knee, letting the headshot sail over me. I caught the other two balls one-handed, leaving the bullies gaping. And many of my other classmates, too. Nice. Dodge skill improved, LVL6. Agility plus one. I rolled one of the balls I had caught to another of my teammates, even as Longfinger's allies slunk off the field. I faced him, and he scrambled back. I took aim dead center at his chest. I wound up. I fired. The ball slipped off my fingers, soared up to almost the rafters, and then dropped easily into Longfinger's large and waiting hands. Right, still don't have a throwing skill. I mumbled as I jogged off the court. Ready, set, go, we called out in unison. Suyu almost instantly took the lead, 
but I was closer on her heels than any of our previous races. It was Wednesday. Including today, I only had five days to finish the quest. We hit the edge of the woods. We both angled north. The southern path was a bit shorter, but there was a fallen tree wedge between two others on the path. And going around through the brush would have taken far too long. So you cleared a pair of ruts in the path in one bound, while I had to jump over them both individually. She bounced off a tree when the path curved. It looked impressive, but I grabbed a springy branch to help me take the turn tighter without slowing. That let me close the gap a little. We reached a place where the path was mostly flat and straight, passing by the outcropping we used to avoid sudden major storms. It was the last leg of the race, where the northern and southern paths converged. If I pushed, I might be able to. Suyu's foot hit an uneven lump of dirt. It crumbled. She went down, hard, and I skidded to a stop. Suyu, are you okay? I knelt down, looking her over carefully. Reibit, she groaned. Yes. Just a bit scraped up. Then she looked up at me curiously. Why did you stop? What do you mean? I countered. You could have kept going, she said. You could have won. I already said I wouldn't want to win that way, I reminded her. The first day we met. And that was before we were even really friends. I couldn't just leave without seeing if you were okay, could I? I guess you couldn't, Sio agreed. But what if this was a real race? Like at school for grades, Ribbit. If it was one-on-one, -on -one, I would probably still stop. Of course, if it wasn't one-one-one, -on -one, you would still stop. She smiled kindly. Yeah, I would, I admitted. Are you sure you are okay? My mom made me carry a first aid kit. We could go back to the lockers. I offered her my hand and pulled her back to her feet. Nope, I am fine. Great, I smiled. Then I turned and darted towards the lake. With a bubbling laugh, she took off after me. And she still beat me in the end. Sunday. The last day. Win a race today or fail the quest. I wouldn't be unhappy to lose. It had been fun, had shown me to see you's competitive side. It was more mild than most people, but she still had one. And my stats had improved quite a bit from trying to keep up with her. But I did want to win. Almost as much for myself as for the quest. And despite having all day, we were going swimming again after we reached the lake. And there was no way I could beat her in the water. I needed something I hadn't tried. There was actually one idea I had come up with, but had dismissed as unfair. But now I wondered if that was right. Or was I just hampering myself, so I would have an excuse when I failed? Tsuyu Chan. I prompted her as we approached the bench. You are going all out when we race, right? Using your full quirk and everything. Of course. She seemed mildly offended. It wouldn't be fair to your hard work if I didn't. Thanks. I told her sincerely. Did you really need to ask? She countered. Well, I admitted, I was a little worried that I would win, only for you to announce that you had a second gear or something, meaning I really didn't win. No, I don't have anything like that, she said. Maybe I can come up with something. If you can, you should, and I'll help. But for now, on your mark, we both said, get set, go. As soon as we took off, I started lifting my body with telekinesis. I wasn't strong enough to fly, or even levitate. But I could make myself lighter. Let me gain more push from each step. I was closer to her than ever before when we hit the split, and I went south. When I got to the obstacle, I jumped at the fallen tree. I jumped off it, towards the larger of the trunks that was trapped between. And a third bounce put me on top of the downed redwood and I quickly rolled to my feet. Good moves. Parkour skill improved, LVL 16. Skill acrobatics, LVL 1 unlocked. Analyze. I gazed north as I ran down the length up the obstacle. Redwood tree the 53rd distinct one you've scanned. 
Unfortunately, it is preventing you from seeing your real target. Actual age is 31 years, but due to quirk growth acceleration, its effect age is 158 years. Health, 1580-1580 Physical Resistance, LVL10 I dove off the tree, hitting the ground hard and flipping forward back onto my feet. Dash 1 Health I reached the merging pads, about three steps ahead of Tsuyu. Then two steps. She's still too fast, I thought, she's going to pass me. I need to go faster. Why can't I? Why couldn't I indeed? I had all of these skills. Some active, some passive. But of all the active ones, only telekinesis consumed my energy. If energy was part stamina, it didn't make any sense. Unless I'm not trying hard enough, or I'm subconsciously holding back, I realized, maybe there is no difference. Maybe I just have to want to use running to go faster. You have made an important deduction. With plus one. Come on, Nizuku, I ordered myself. Move. Run. Running skill active mode jet set run. Unlocked. While in active mode, your running speed is increased by 22% but consumes 1 stamina, energy, per second. Cost and bonus vary based on your running skill level. Jet set run. Now active. Tsuyu had just passed me when I accelerated again. 10 meters to the beach I drew even with her. 5 meters to the beach I passed her. 2 meters to the beach I realized I was going too fast. Dash 1 health. I plowed into the water hard enough that I stumbled and face planted. When I pulled my head back out of the lake, I found Tsuyu standing over me. Staring down at me. Grinning happily. It looks like you were the one with the second gear. She pulled me up. Or you were just too anxious to start swimming. I guess I did. I agreed, deactivating the mode and looking at my moderately depleted energy. I didn't know I had it in me. I thought you might, she told me. Quest, I said. Tsuyu was still changing. I was sitting on the bench, waiting for her. As I expected, when the screen came up, Dual Duel was blinking. Quest Dual Duel complete. Claim the rewards? Accept decline? I hit accept. Bonus skills received. Running skill improved, LVL 13. Telekinesis skill improved, LVL 14. Parkour skill improved, LVL 17. Acrobatic skill improved, LVL 2. Analyze skill improved, LVL 14. Physical resistance skill improved, LVL 7. Swimming skill improved, LVL 4. Talent points, plus 1. I guessed hitting the water running was enough to count as swimming. Not that I was complaining. But I should have thrown some punches, or tried to do some math, I lamented in hindsight. I flipped over to talents. Free running was the MVP here. Without it I wouldn't have had the quickness or running to keep up, even with my final breakthrough. But now I was looking at Key Initiate again. I was still level 3, so unless another quest came up, it would be at least two more levels until I could unlock it and still have a talent point to spare. The longer I waited, the less time I would have to start training it. But what if something else came up? A quest or just my growth caused an even better talent to become available. Still, my finger hovered over the button. What's up, Izuku? Tsuya's voice suddenly said behind me. And, and I flinched forward. Talent key initiate acquired. Skill key detection available. Skill key projection available. Skill key regeneration available. Skill key reinforcement available. I blinked in surprise. Why are you just staring into space? She asked. Just thinking about the race and swimming, I said, wondering what we should work on next. Though I, at least, had part of my own answer. Well, we should still keep racing from time to time, she said. I do need to take my title back after all. Sure, I agreed. Chapter 7 Ready, Tsuyu-chan? I asked, glancing back at her. 
Yup. She nodded, crouched, and ready to spring. I turned back and looked at my target. A trio of crude, concentric, chalk circles drawn on the flattest tree we could find. I took the first tennis ball from the bag I had slung over my chest. I wound up. I threw it, about half as hard as I could. It hit just outside the middle ring. And then, thanks to the uneven bark, ricocheted high and to my right. So you tracked it. Her tongue shot out, reeling the ball in. She slipped it into a second bag, even as I launched again. At first I had been worried about this exercise. Sure, throwing was good for my strength and agility. And snagging the balls after they flew off in a random direction was good for Tsuyu's tongue control and aim and tracking in general. But she was also grabbing tennis balls with her tongue. After they had hit a tree, and possibly the chalk target. Then I remembered I had first met her when she was playing Tarzan by swinging from branches with that same tongue. So I had proposed it. Tsuya had immediately agreed, saying it was a good idea. So here we were, playing one of the stranger games of catch I could think of. Izuka-kun. We were switching bags to start again, and Tsuya had just switched her mouth out. Yes? I stopped at her prompting. Your birthday is next Saturday, right? She asked. One week away. Is there something you want? I had to blink back tears. You're the first person to ask me that, besides my mom. I told her at her concerned expression. And just you and your siblings coming over for dinner will be more than enough. We already do that once a week. She pointed out. Then paused to consider. What if I didn't bring them? She asked. What if they stayed with our aunt, and it was just the three of us? That would be nice, too, I said. I liked her siblings well enough, but it would be good not to have to talk about the latest episode of Ducky Momo, or play Hero's Musa on the lowest difficulty. Then maybe you could stay over, I suggested, and we could watch Infinity War through Endgame in a marathon. Mom and Tsuyu both agreed that the MCU was a bit too much for the younger Ajui siblings. So we could only watch the movies when the kids had something else to do. And since Tsuyu had never seen any of them before, I was determined she see at least the first 40 movies before the UA exam. Besides just being good movies, they were an interesting look into how people had viewed powers before quirks existed. And there were some interesting ideas you could take away from them. That would be fun she said, but there was a bit of a hitch in her voice. I'll check with my aunt. And I'll ask my mom. I agreed. Are you sure you don't want anything? She pressed. If you really want to give me something. I deflected. You might want to talk to my mom. She always makes me give her a list, and I wouldn't want to risk you two doubling up. Though this year it is mostly study materials. If I had written it down, the kanji for study materials would have read skill books. Maybe I'll do that, she said thoughtfully. Okay, back to work, I said quickly, hoping she would forget it. I would have rather Tsuyu spent the money to buy something she wanted, knowing how hard her parents worked and that she spent most of her allowance on her brother and sister. But I also knew she wouldn't be happy if I told her that. Ribbit, she nodded. The next morning, Sunday, July 9th, we played catch again, only this time a more brutal version. We took turns throwing the tennis balls at each other as hard as we could. Tsuyu never failed to catch one, and I. I gained a few levels in physical resistance. We did this on the beach, barefoot in the sand. We had brought out lunches with us, but left our shoes in the lockers. When it was time for a break, a bit earlier than normal, we sat down with our feet in the water. I talked to my mom, I told her, and she is fine with it, though she said you'll have to bunk with her. That's fine, she said. My aunt agreed to watch Sammy Dare and Satsuki next weekend, both Saturday and Sunday. Great, I smiled happily at her, and she grinned back. Then something cold and wet smacked the side of my face. Tsuya blinked, but when I touched it, it was just water. It was a raindrop but one almost the size of a grape. Splush. Another giant drop hit the lake audibly, created two centimeter tall ripples. 
We both looked up as more started to fall. Thick clouds had rolled in, and a cold gust of wind hit us. I didn't see anything about storms on the news this morning, she noted as the rain began to fall in earnest. We should probably head back, I said, at least to the cave. Yes, she agreed. We collected the tennis balls and I packed them in my bento box. Even moving as quickly as we could, the rain was starting to get heavy and we were moderately soaked by the time we got back into the forest. The ground was wet and slippery, so we couldn't move too fast. K-R-A-K-O-W The air around us shook as lightning hit somewhere north of us. We exchanged looks. We both knew in a thunderstorm, you were supposed to seek shelter, stay low, but not stand next to trees. The outcropping was still our best option, so we picked up the pace. Through the dark and rain it was hard to see, but I knew the forest around there well enough to know we were getting close. So you got a bit ahead of me, more sure-footed in the rain. We had maybe another 50 to 100 meters to go, when it happened. Kiara could be OM. The lightning strike was close. South close I was blinded even though I wasn't looking at it. South close my ears were ringing. I shook my head, trying to clear it, when I heard a rumbling and then... Izuku! Suyu so screamed with far more emotion than I had ever heard in her voice before. I looked towards her, my vision starting to clear. Her tongue shot out, wrapped around my waist, pulled me back towards her. Except the ground was slick, and I weighed at least as much as she did. So even I was yanked towards her, she stumbled towards me. We bumped. She let go with her tongue. I slipped and fell to the ground. The forest shook, and a shockwave washed over me. Dash 11 Health I raised my head up and saw Tsuyu lying on the ground, surrounded by a halo of slowly spreading red. Tsu! I shouted, scrambling over to her. There was a large gash in her head, deep enough I could see the white of bone through it. Even worse, a broken branch had skewered her, entering near or through her right kidney and exiting near her navel. I felt tears forming in my eyes and panic in my stomach. Then a spike of ice shot down my spine, vanishing the fear and filling me with focus. Analyze. I snapped. Name, Tsuyu Ajri. Race, human, quirk metagene positive. Age, 14. Level, 5. Active title, frog girl. Health, dash 24 slash 246. Stamina, 122 slash 132. Condition, dying. She was still alive. But she was dying. And I didn't know how long she had. She had almost 250 HP, at level 5, so her physical abilities had to be high. Her endurance should be at least 35, probably over 40. But that meant she had somewhere between 20 minutes and an hour left. And the rain wasn't helping, chilling her and hindering clotting. Sia had told me she wasn't good with cold. Okay, first thing was to get her out of the downpour. I had to be careful. I wrapped Suyu and part of the branch in a shell of telekinesis. My psychic power wasn't enough to lift her yet. What I could do was hold her steady. Then I activated key reinforcement, boosting my strength. With a single chop, I shattered the branch just outside the barrier. Neither Tsuyu nor the embedded stick moved. I lifted her gently and ordered, Activate Jet Set Run! She felt so much lighter than that first day she crashed into me. I hoped it was just my increased strength and new and improved skills. I set Suyu down as far back in the outcropping as I could, using my body to shield her. Another analyze showed she had lost another point of health. Okay, what now? I mused. I took my phone out of my inventory. But as I expected, nothing. The coverage in Indora was spotty at best. In the midst of a thunderstorm, I had no signal. I could go to the road and try to flag someone down, or wait for the bus. But I don't want to leave to see you alone. Izuzuzu, she groaned, her eyes flickering. I took her hand. If I had the next key talent, I could heal her. I mumbled, 
or if I had first aid as a skill, I could at least try to stabilize her. Mom might be able to do it. If I try a reflective dungeon, Mom would be pulled in too. But I don't know if she would exit with me or go back where she started. I hadn't experimented with that power, since Mom was always in my party, and I didn't know the risks. Either way, if she is here she could help, and if she goes back she could call an ambulance. But that's assuming we don't get immediately attacked in the dungeon and get hurt or delayed. And I still don't want to leave Tsu. Time was the enemy, but lack of information was a close second. But then I remembered a book I had read, and way it said villains had cheated. Party invite Azri Tsuyu. The window appeared. I gently lifted Tsuyu's hand and used her finger to hit accept. Thank you, Kawahara Sensei. Nice workaround. Wit plus one. Disable notices from Midoriya Izuku until further notice. I barked. Party. I immediately clicked on Tsuyu's panel in the tab, showing her full status page. I ignored her skills and talents. I saw something that would give me time. Tsuyu. I called out to her gently. Please, if you can hear me, say status. Tsu, just say status dot. Status. She complied, barely coherently. But the screen appeared. Name, Tsuyu Ajri. Race, human, quirk metagene positive. Age, 14. Level, 5. Active title, frog girl. Health, dash 26 slash 246. Stamina, 122 slash 132. Condition, dying. Attributes. S strength, 26. A agility, 45. E endurance, 44. Q yukness, 43. W it, 12. I intuition, 18. C charisma, 10. D determination, 10. L luck, 5. And use points. Attribute 7. Skill 6. Talent 1. 7 and used attributes points. That would get her 23 more health, putting her at minus 3 compared to 51 endurance. That would give her 3 to 4 hours. Sorry to see you, I told her, and lifted her finger again. I began tapping the button next to her endurance increasing it and relaxing slightly as her health increased with each point. Before I could assign the last point, another pop-up stopped me. Congratulations. Endurance has reached peak human tier. Please select a bonus talent. Tempered breathing. Reduced stamina usage. Tough as nails. Reduced physical damage taken. Efficient sleeper. Decreases sleep requirement. I frowned. That was less information than I received about my talents. I couldn't help but wonder if one of them had a hidden attribute bonus that would help to you. Again, I needed more information. More information. Analyze! I ordered, staring at the first talent panel. Tempered breathing. Reduce stamina cost for activated skills by 20%. Increase iteration timer for continuous stamina skills by 20%. Prerequisites. Endurance 50 plus. 50 plus levels of stamina based skills. Useful, but not in this situation. Analyze. Tough as nails. Unlock skill physical resistance at LVL 10 or increase current physical resistance skill by 10 levels. Limit break physical resistance skill, new max level 140. Prerequisites. Health 250 plus. Must have been reduced to negative health at least once. Again, nice to have, but not what I was hoping for. Analyze, I said less hopefully. Efficient sleeper. Reduces time for a full night's sleep from 8 hours to 5 hours. Plus 5 endurance. Prerequisites. Endurance 50 plus. There it was. Five more endurance would put her above zero. I almost hit the button for it. Then I paused. I retrieved my stored first aid kit. 
I got out the tweezers and filled the pipette bottle with one of the two pouches of distilled water. I dropped the reinforcement of my strength, switching it to agility. Then holding Tsuyu still, holding her insides in place, with my telekinesis, I pulled the wooden stump out. Looking inside her, I almost vomited. Gamer's mind kept me steady. Barely. I used the little prongs to remove any splinters or other fragments, then washed the wound out. She lost two more health, but as soon as her injury was as clean as I could get it, I lifted her finger. Hit the panel for efficient sleeper. It was interesting, and more than a little disturbing. Watching her organs regrow before my eyes. In a matter of moments, Sue was left with two large, round gashes, one on each side of her abdomen and the one on her head had shrunken down to the point I could no longer see her skull. There were three bad injuries, enough to send her to the hospital. But they were no longer life-threatening. But it was still better not to move her, not during the rain. Not when her health was still in the single digits. And there was a good chance I could slip. Besides, the wet and cold would still be bad for her injuries. I took out a tube of ointment. The kind that would supposedly ease pain, prevent infection, speed healing, and limit scarring. I rubbed it gently on the wounds on her front and back, and then wrapped the gauze around them. I dabbed it on her head, and the wrap that one too. I took the adhesive bandages, which already had the same compound already applied. I put them over all the smaller cuts. Then I crushed an ibuprofen, mixed it in the remain water in the bottle, and piped it into her mouth. I rubbed her throat gently to encourage her to swallow. Tsuyu was no longer openly bleeding, but she shivered. I took out my towel and carefully, respectfully dried her as best I could. Then I traded that for my other two track suits and draped them over her. Finally, I settled down next to her, my arm pressed against her back. I pulled the suits partially over me so she could share my body heat. I felt suddenly exhausted. I checked, and found my energy was zero. Between all the TK, and having both key reinforcement and jet set run, active, I had drained my tank dry. I shut off the two continuous skills. I edged up closer to Tsu, just in case. I tried to keep my eyes. I woke up to feel something warm and soft pressed against my chest and legs. The side I was laying on felt uncomfortable. I was on a surface a lot harder than my bed. It was quiet, and golden sunlight was hitting my back, warming it slightly. The my brain slipped into gear. My memories reasserted themselves. My eyes popped open. In my sleep, I had rolled onto my side, which wasn't that unusual for me. Except I had rolled towards Tsuyu. Against her. We were spooning, my arm pulling her closer. And she wasn't asleep. She had twisted slightly, and was studying me. I wanted to believe there was a light blush across her cheeks, but the late afternoon sun made it hard to tell. Embarrassment would have to wait. There was something much more important here. Tsu! I gasped in relief. You're awake. How are you? Rather than speaking, she lifted her hand and pointed. I hadn't noticed the yellow box floating a dozen or so centimeters away from her face. Party plus proximity power propagation provoked. You have had a decent lunch and an extended afternoon nap. Health and stamina fully restored. Analyze, I said blatantly. Status. Name, Tsuyu Ajri. Race, human, quirk metagene positive. Age, 14. Level 5 Active Title Frog Girl Health 281-281 Stamina 163-163 And my window told me it had been not quite 6 hours since the last time I checked. Thank goodness, I stumbled over the words slightly as I hugged her. I was so worried. I separated from her, pulling my spare workout clothing back into my inventory. Then I dropped the rest of the way down into a full digis and kneel. I am so sorry for wasting your precious attribute points and bonus talent. I cried. I swear I will find a way to make it up to you. Tsuyu frowned at me in confusion. 
I told her everything about the gamer, and how I used it to save her. Ajui-san listened closely, only asking a handful of questions. So I will help you gain more levels, I told her quickly. Maybe see if there is some way you can get quests, or something, to make up for using your points against your will. Izuku, she said gently. It's fine. You used something I didn't even know I had to save my life. And you trusted me with this. Only after I hid it from you. I countered. And I can understand why. She shot back with a bit of heat. You have a power that isn't a quirk. There is no telling how the government would react. Or what villains would do to get their hands on it. I know. I admit it. But that doesn't mean I have to feel good about it. And besides, you saved my life first. Actually, she tilted her head. You saved my life first, I saved your life second, and you saved my life third. You said that fall wouldn't have hurt you. I reminded her, shocked. That you had fallen from higher than that. I might have been exaggerating. Tsuyu told me. I have fallen from higher, but it was more of a controlled fall and into water. Still, I shouldn't have. I continued to protest my guilt. Izuku, it's okay. She reassured me. I might have even bought that sleeping thing myself. Three extra hours every day. She adopted a mildly blissful expression, reminding me how busy she was. I'm just happy to come out of it unhurt. Tsuyu said. Speaking of that, I began. Can I check? I pointed to the many and various bandages crudely applied. She nodded. I started with the one on her head. Though the gauze was still caked in blood, underneath there was nothing. Not the original gash, not a scab, not even a scar. Like my fingers, Tsuyu's forehead healed like the injury had never happened. I removed the band-aids on her face, neck and arms. To the same result. Finally, I unwound the large bandage around her abdomen. This time there was some blood stuck to her skin, but I brushed it away to reveal the same smooth, unblemished skin she had shown off with her bikini. You are really okay, I sighed. She looked down at her stomach in amazement. I don't remember a lot of what happened, she admitted, but I did see the branch sticking out of me. For it to heal that quickly and fully, that's a pretty impressive power, Ribbit. We sat regarding her uninjured self for a moment. Well, it is after five. I broke the silence. I don't think we are going to practice anymore today. And the rain stopped. So should we start heading back? She didn't react immediately. Then her expression told me she had come to a decision. Hold on, Izuku, she said. She reached down to the bottom of her bloody and ventilated shirt, already partially raised. She began to take it off, so I turned around. Good idea, you should probably change first, I said, or Sammy Dare and Satsuki might get scared. It didn't occur to me in that moment that she didn't have anything to change into. Don't look away, she told me softly. I thought she must have had her swimsuit on underneath. I hadn't really paid attention during the storm. If I had. Tsuyu had fully removed her shirt and was covered on top only by a bra. Not a sports bra or a simple one either. It wasn't terribly fancy. Nor was it tawdry. But it had just the right mix of lace and cotton and highlighted her figure well. I should have looked away. Or at least blinked. But I couldn't. She told me not to. And I was young lonely, teenage, and entranced. Then she reached around behind and... Unbuttoned? Unsnapped? I wasn't sure how girls' underwear worked, but Tsuyu unfastened something. The cups started to loosen. My hands shot up, grabbing her shoulders. Not incidentally locking the straps in place, preventing anything more from showing. Tsu, what are you, you, doing? I stammered, my voice jumping up at least an octave this. She leaned in, pushing my arms back without knocking my hands off. She pressed her lips to mine. The kiss was tender, affectionate, and more than a little awkward. Her lips had the faint taste of chicken and berries from her salad. And she smelled like a clean brook, 
bubbling past on a warm spring day. The move, probably not accidentally, left my fingers on her shoulders while compressing her chest against my forearms. I like you, Izuku, she said, using one of the more loaded and ambiguous Japanese versions of like, and I really want to. She blushed and rolled one hand. Don't you? She asked shyly. I don't, I said far more quickly than I would have thought possible. Sue's eyes widened, and she started to pull back. But I was still holding on. Don't misunderstand, I continued. You are cute and sexy. You are my best friend. And I like you a lot. Part of me would like nothing more than to take the lead here and keep going. But even more I don't want to. I can't have sex with you to see you. Her eyes stayed on me, gently begging me to explain. A big part is this situation. I said, our emotions are both running high. We just saved each other, and it seems like you feel obligated to me. Maybe that doesn't have anything to do with this, but on the off chance it does, I can't take advantage of you like that. She frowned, but didn't protest. Plus, I don't want to do it on hard, damp dirt. I looked around. It's just not right, right? She chuckled. My mom is trusting us out here. Alone together. And I don't want to betray that trust. She nodded sadly. But the real reason is all me. I explained. Let me show you. Quests. Tsu reconnected her bra and made a very deliberate show of adjusting her breasts in it. Then she scooted around, pressing herself against my arm. The next instant her eyes widened. I get one chance to make it into you, eh? I said. As a hero. If I don't, I lose the gamer. And I don't know what that means. At the very least, I lose the windows, the control and information. And at the worst, I might lose everything I have gained since that day. Go back to being that person. I don't know if I could handle it. And I wouldn't feel worthy of you if I were the old me. She started to object and I held up my hand. I know you aren't like that. Like I said, it's about me. My past, my insecurities, and also my goals and promises. I can't afford distractions. Any more than I already have. I mumbled under my breath, acutely aware of her body with more than one of my senses. If we were to make love right now, I wouldn't want it to be a one-time thing. And if it were, it might even be worse. But if we started skipping training to go on dates, to make out, it would be such an easy trap to fall into. And I was so far behind to start, I can't afford to. I looked at her, feeling tears in my eyes again. I'm sorry if I'm not being clear. And I understand if I sound pathetic. But I'm not rejecting you, Tsuchan. I'm just saying not today. Or tomorrow. But if it is okay with you, maybe we can talk about this again after we both make it into Yue. She smiled slightly, and kissed me on the cheek, saying... I'll hold you to that. Great. I smiled again, though I quickly dialed it back. You can borrow one of my tracksuits for now. We can say that your clothing got soaked, which is true, so I lent it to you. We caught the next bus and got back early. We blamed the rain. Tsuya's sibling accepted that at face value, but I could tell mom did not. After dinner and saying our goodbyes to the Azuas, Mom faced me directly. How is Tsuyu Chan? She asked softly but firmly. Fine, I told her. A bit shaken, but otherwise fine. I told her. Not the part where Tsu tried to seduce me. But about the morning, the sudden storm. The tree, how Tsuyu saved me. And how I saved her. The fact that Tsuyu now knew about the gamer. And how are you doing? She asked once I trailed off. Actually, I considered it. I think I am good. Better even. Like some weights I didn't know I was carrying are lighter. Hiding my power. Guilt and doubt that I might have been able to do something for Kakin. Those pressures weren't gone. But they were definitely less. Then I looked over at her cautiously and asked, Is this the part where you say we can't train anymore? No. Mom smiled. This is the part where I tell you how very proud of you I am. Mom? 
Izuku, she said. It was an accident. Not much different than if a truck's brakes failed. You can't predict these things. Sir Knight, I could. I could not help but note. She ignored me. Just locking you away isn't the answer. Mom kept going. You handled the situation calmly and rationally. And you saved Sia's life. You didn't hesitate to give up your secret. Though maybe you could have hesitated a little. If it meant you could help. So no, I'm not going to forbid you two from going to Endora to train. I'm not going to yell at you. I'm just going to say again how proud I am of you. Of both of you. And ask to have the first aid kit, so I can refill it. And maybe I will show you a few mistakes you made, based on your description. I felt like I was seeing my mom for the first time in a while. She looked taller and thinner. At least a little. Or maybe it was just my mixed-up emotions. You've gotten stronger, mom. I told her. Thank you, Izuku, she said, and I'm guessing today probably made you stronger too. Oh, right, I remember. Enable alerts. My vision was flooded. Charisma bonus for smooth talking. I wasn't sure when that happened. Maybe when I was apologizing for using her points. Lots of skill increases. Most of my attributes went up at least one. But best of all, I made it to level four. I told mom, working to close all the screens and spending my one point on luck. That's great, honey. Now, first aid kit. And then you definitely need a bath. It is a good thing Sammy Dare and Satsuki didn't notice the blood on you. I pulled the box out of inventory and set it on the table. Then I hurried to the bathroom. My nap hadn't been long enough, so I was still tired, injured, and looking forward to a good soak. I'm not strong enough yet. Inko let herself relax, the hidden worry seeping back into her face. But I will be. She began repacking the kit, using gravity pull as much as she could. And there you have it, folks. Part one of our epic journey exploring. What if Deku had the gamer powers? Wasn't that mind-blowing? If you enjoyed this video as much as I did making it, Make sure to smash that like button and share it with your fellow hero enthusiasts. Also, don't forget to comment down below with your thoughts and theories. I love reading your comments and engaging with this awesome community. If you haven't subscribed yet, what are you waiting for? Hit that subscribe button, ring the notification bell, and become a part of our incredible family. We've got more thrilling content coming your way, and you won't want to miss it. Once again, a massive shout out to each one of you for your continuous support. You guys are the real heroes here. Stay tuned for more exciting adventures in the world of anime, gaming, and everything awesome. Until next time, this is Kronos, signing off. Catch you in the next video, my friends.